Hey guys, so much anticipated video on the accuracy of the K1 in 25 caliber. Uh, I have been getting a lot of requests for this video and I must honestly say that I'm doing it slightly before I really feel comfortable of sharing this information. But since the request was so high, I decided to do it anyway, at least what I have till now. So uh, I've had this gun now for a little over one month and uh, frankly I didn't have that much chance of shooting with it yet uh, so that's uh, my hesitation in terms of getting this info out because I do want to get uh, the info, the correct uh, info out and thoroughly test that info out. So um, I mentioned uh, uh, in the first part of the video already what is different between the let's say older uh, 22k1 and uh, newer 25 uh, what I learned at EVA is that uh, the changes that, uh, that I have mentioned of course all of them except the caliber are actually also made on the newer versions of the 22 series so you have the monolith uh, uh, clamp and the Picatinny rail you have slightly different uh, uh, this uh, back plate uh, and uh, in some different internal parts here a um, few different things that are uh, just uh, as an improvement as what his Hub and Constant is doing, they're improving and upgrading their uh, gun in general. So, um, a little bit more talk about uh, my setup here. So, I got a uh, uh, Tag Vector Tauros uh, scope here. Uh, I actually was using this one also to record and uh, test the accuracy. Uh, so basically I remove the front clamp for the barrel. Now I did do this usually on all of my K1s. I don't think that it really uh, increases the accuracy. I actually, I, I would say that I think it does, but I cannot confirm it. So, but I just do it anyway. So uh, the, the one thing uh, that I had a bit of uh, trouble with, with uh, my K1, is the fact that the rail uh, seemed to be slightly tilted up, meaning that uh, at uh, longer ranges I really had to crank up the scope really a lot and this is kind of what bothered me and uh, removing this clamp somewhat helped this because the clamp was holding the barrel slightly more down than it is right now. Uh, otherwise, I didn't have any issues with uh, my K1 in general whatsoever. I did fit the um, uh, gauge, so the pressure gauge in the front, which is a nice thing to have. Uh, and that's about it. Otherwise, everything is as it is. Uh, I have to thank to uh, Claudio uh, from Patagonia. You may know him from Extreme Benchrest. He was the winner in 2018. And uh, I have to thank him because uh, this is a bipod that he provided for me and I'm really thankful. It's a really, really nice bipod, really adjustable and really sturdy. So perfect, uh, perfect add-on for uh, K1. So um, just a couple of more comments on the K1 in general before we get to the accuracy. So I tested a lot of pellets. I tested my slugs. I must say that I'm uh, I'm not happy with the slugs yet. I am still working on getting them fly good, and uh, part of the reason is that uh, uh, K1 went so Huben went uh, in a slightly different direction with their uh, uh, 25 version. Uh, I would say uh, it's it's minor changes, but uh, if I would have to say, I would say that they have optimized it more now for pellets than for slugs. Now that doesn't mean that it doesn't still sh shoot slugs well. It just means that it's optimized for pellets. And I'm saying this because of how the magazine is designed. So uh, in 25 version, the magazine is actually virtual identical dimension than the uh, groove of the barrel. The barrel is of course choked, which is not best for uh, pellets, but this was also in 22, uh, sorry, not best for uh, slugs. It's great for pellets. Uh, this was also on 22 version. The barrel is sli slightly shorter. Uh, the barrel thickness is still the same, so it's 12.2 millimeters 
all the way. And uh, considering that the 25 caliber, of course, has a larger bore, this is kind of a downside in terms of vibrations. So if you really crank up the power, if you really crank uh, the weight, so if you use the highest weight possible slugs, uh, I am uh, assuming that the vibration might be part of the problems for not getting the best results with slugs. Uh, and um, I do intend to experiment in this regards quite a bit in the future and of course I will make uh, videos of those. But right now I wanted to make uh, a video of how the stock K1 performs without any modifications whatsoever. The only thing is removed uh, the front clamp. Um, uh, so uh, that is why uh, 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 most of the tests that you will see in this video are made with pellets. And uh, the other reason is because I simply didn't get to test that much and the weather was just crazy. The wind you will see in the videos was so high that I didn't dare to go uh, further than 50 meters. And uh, I did most of tests on 50 meters and I did a very short clip uh, also with pellets at 100 meters on the silhouette. So uh, you will see this uh, in the at the end of the video. So let's get through the uh, slugs and pellets I went through. So let me put K1 aside. So we've got it from your left to right, the pellets that are best to pellets that are worst. I mean, the, I mean let, the, let's say the less section, it's, it doesn't mean that uh, this one is worse than this one, it's just kind of, they're all not very good. But in terms of best, definitely right now King Heavy is your best, best option. It's very accurate, just don't go crazy with uh, power, because these uh, pellets cannot take more than about 850 feet per second so that's about just over 250 meters per second you can go up to 900 feet per second it will still be okay uh, if you're shooting really long range nine hit, uh, 900 feet per second will give you some flyers some uh, uh, destabilized pellets kink regular kink is also a very good option the only reason why it's in second place is because the King Heavy uh, tends to be better on in high winds. Of course, it's heavier, so it will be less affected. Right now, on the third place is my uh, my slugs. So these are the uh, MP molds, 48 grains. And we will get to the settings on the gun in a minute for a different kind of pellets. Uh, right after that, I have Nielsen slugs. Now, it's very important to, um, so these are the 39 grains. It's a very important for me to say that these are not designed for Huben. So that's, otherwise they will probably be uh, much uh, higher on the list uh, because the dimension is a little too small. As you may know from the 22 caliber, Huben requires to have slightly larger pellet slugs because it has actual chamber for it so it doesn't uh, because it shoots out of the magazine so it's not inserted in the barrel so these are designed to be inserted in the barrel so that's why they are a little lower I have uh, high hopes for Polymax and they were actually quite good uh, but I would have to test them more because the wind was just too high and uh, also I would have to test different velocity. Yunjin were reasonably well. I, I was hoping to be for them to be more accurate. Um, Barracuda uh, Hunter. Now both Barracudas are actually not really stable. Uh, I mean they can be stable but you will have flyers. Uh, the, if you have to use either one of them, it will probably be Hunter because it's uh, the expansion uh, type, so the, the hollow point version, uh, probably for you hunters out there. And in the end, uh, we got the field target trophy. These were also reasonably good, but it's too light. For this gun, it just makes no sense. Uh, and the Grizzly, which is actually I don't think it was ever accurate in any of my guns, so I don't uh, like it that much. I will definitely have more pellets, more slugs to test, mainly slugs probably, and uh, also some mods to be done. So let's go through the power. So as you can see right now, I have the pressure set to about, I would say less than 130 bars. 
Yeah, so let's let's say 130 bars, and this is more than enough for any pellet. So meaning that for pellets you need to use low pressure, and all of even the heavier pellets this will push it up to 300 meters per second. You don't want to do that, of course, because the pellets will not be stable probably, uh, but it's more than enough power. If you use, however, my slugs, then you will need to increase the pressure to 200 bars. That's nowhere getting lower than 200 bars. Um, a colleague of mine did made some mods to it that uh, it uh, kind of uh, enables you to get even higher powers. Uh, I haven't done any mods yet. I will probably in the future. My main mod, mod that I intend to do, uh, and this will be strictly dedicated for using uh, slugs, is I intend to put a 600 millimeter barrel. So right now is 560 millimeter. And uh, it will definitely be unchoked because I want, uh, this mod is basically dedicated uh, for slugs. I mean, Pellet's performance is good as it is now, but I want to take advantage of the power plant of this gun because it's such a performer and get uh, high velocities and high energies. And with the 600 millimeter barrel, it will, I will get slightly higher power and with it being unchoked, also uh, better performance with slugs. Uh, and uh, the last thing is I want the barrel to be thicker from here on. So I don't think that uh, uh, such high energies and such heavy slugs can uh, be shot accurately out of the thin barrel that it is uh, inside right now. So the backside I will have to make it thinner in order to get it through this clamp because the rear clamp is actually what uh, clamps actually the barrel, not the shroud. But from here on, from, from here on it can be thicker. So it will be thicker from here on and here it will be uh, held in place uh, by shroud. Uh, and that's about it. And uh, with that one I should get uh, much better accuracy. Um, a few more comments regarding my slugs, uh, so MP molds. MP molds, they are uh, available right now, at least uh, at the time of recording this video. So um, you can order them. I asked Miha, which is uh, CEO of the MP molds, I asked him to optionally also include a sizer because uh, as uh, some of you already noticed, uh, these pellets are quite hard to, slugs are quite hard to push in uh, the magazine. So the size uh, of the sizing die will be actually 5 point, sorry, 6.45 millimeters. So if you don't uh, want to order it, you can order without it. And if you already have it or you can get it locally, of course you can get it. So the dimension is 6.45 millimeters. And uh, by using uh, that sizing die, you can actually put the slugs in with no effort at all. So I can show you this right now. Uh, by the way, I'm getting really good feedback about those slugs, not just in Huben, also in other guns. Uh, so this is very easy to put inside, no effort whatsoever. Um, so the slugs are definitely good. Uh, and uh, that's about it. So let's get to the groups. So first, let's start with the regular king. So 50 meters regular king. You will see in the videos uh, following this, the wind was extreme. So this was the sighting shot. That's why I crossed it over because it's not part of the group. And then we have just, uh, uh, I think it was uh, eight or nine shots. I'm not sure right here. So quite good, especially considering the wind, it's clear that the wind influenced the accuracy because all of the deviation is in horizontal side and not in vertical. Uh, and uh, these are definitely a good choice for it, for Huben. Uh, King Heavy being the best choice. So again, you will very clearly see in the video, in this one, the wind was just crazy. So 
first couple of shots the wind was the same and afterwards in change direction and it just moved it around you will see this in the video as well as this one this one is uh, slightly better slightly less influence of the wind and uh, the last one is with mp modes as i said i'm not really satisfied with those results yet unfortunately i don't have a recording of this because for some reason the camera for uh, long for the range for the target did not record the only recording i have is uh, of uh, the crony and i will give you that uh, and that's about it all other groups that you see uh, here I, I won't show you. I'm not that confident enough. Maybe some of the pellets that I mentioned here that are not good are actually good. But the circumstances, the wind, the power setting or something like that uh, has influenced my judgment and uh, so my basically accuracy in the paper. So I will not give you the, uh, the videos of uh, testing out others. Uh, I might do it in the future, especially if I find a particular pair that it actually is accurate, I will post it up for you. So basically, if you uh, want to just get a good accuracy out of the gun as it is, these are great. I mean, there is really not anything bad to say about it. it they shoot great in the gun. The shot count is extremely high with those two. I mean, uh, I rarely fill the guns more than to 250 bars simply because I have a 300 bar bottle. And if you have a 300 bar ba bottle, chances are that 50% of the time you will not have more than 250 bars in it. Uh, so uh, at that time I was actually quite low uh, in pressure uh, of, in the bottle. So I, actually those I shot actually uh, with the gun connected on the bottle because I didn't have more than 220 bars in the bottle and the gun was regulated to 200 bars at the time uh, as I was shooting my slugs. So with these really nice shot counts, from 230 bars you get uh, at least three magazines of each of those with reasonable power of course with this uh, reports for my colleagues in usa they say they do they do get two magazines from a full fill of 300 bars not 350 but 300 so it's still a good shot count uh, again uh, depends on your power settings generally you get about same shot count if you have the pressure high or lower if you have the pressure slightly higher then uh, the, the gun will be slightly quieter which is the one thing i mentioned about uh, k1 in 25 in the first place in the first video it is quite qui uh, quiet but if you have the pressure slightly higher it's more quiet because you are closing the valve faster to get the same amount of energy. So in terms of shot count, if you uh, have the pressure slightly higher, uh, you will get the same shot count if you have the slightly lower pressure and the same power, because at the higher pressure, you are getting better efficiency actually, but you will have to finish the shooting faster because you will reach the pressure sooner because it's higher pressure and uh, vice versa on the lower pressure. So basically you will have more range in terms of pressure to shoot through, but the consumption will be slightly higher. So that is, let's say, a little bit of physics uh, added to this video. So that's it. Uh, enjoy the accuracy uh, portion at the end and uh, please subscribe and uh, see you in the next video. Yeah, the wind is picking up.
Ah, na tosse toda do zoento. I'm out. Might have been me. The wind. Yeah, the wind just changed. 